with the blessing of the Creator, we must remind ourselves in every situation in our life how beautiful is that opportunity that we have to connect ourselves to the rest of the souls of Israel. Now, many of us, a lot of times in our life, we forget that we ourselves are holy children of the Almighty. But in reality, the bottom line is that we are who that we are. We are who that the Creator made us to be. And it is a known thing that most of the tribes of Israel went down into the dark areas of the exile. And we're talking about around 3,000 years ago. And most of the tribes of Israel lost their identity and cannot remember physically to who they attach to from the holy ancestors, from the holy tribes. They don't remember if they're from the tribe of Judah, if they're from the tribe of Binyamin, of Asher, of God, of, um, of, of Issachar and Zvulun. They cannot remember. And only one thing is reminding us of our true identity, and it's the inner voice of our soul. The inner voice that is attaching you to the wisdom of the Torah, to the wisdom of the Bible, to the wisdom of the sages, to the wisdom of the Creator. That inner desire, that inner passion, that satisfaction that you feel when you hear a verse, when you express your heart in a prayer, when you see a synagogue, when you see a Jewish person goes, walks in the street, when you see a tzitzit with a bright blue string in every situation that you find yourself in front of something that is reminding you of your connection to the roots of Israel when your spirit is waking up because of that that's the evidence for your inner connection to the Creator by that amazing tree of life that is the three branches of our ancestors Abraham Isaac and Jacob, the 12 children of Jacob, the holy tribes of Israel. The spiritual inner connection, the satisfaction that you feel, the joy and the happiness that is surrounding you when the holy days are coming, when you hear another word of Torah or good news about the nation of Israel, something that is connected to the holy land of Israel, if you hear the word Yerushalayim or Zion or the Harabait, the Holy Mountain, the House of Hashem, Beit HaMikdash, the Temple, and those words remind you of something divine, something holy, your memories are waking up from within. And that's the strongest and the clearest evidence for your true identity as one of those holy branches that the root and beginning is the tree of life of our holy ancestors Abraham Isaac and Jacob and if you have those amazing feelings inside of you that you feel attached to those holy concepts and that you desire the words of the Torah and that you want to be connected to holy sages and the righteous ones and to their words of truth to the Hasidu, to Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, to the Lubavitcher Rebbe, to the Baba Sali, and to all the righteous ones, to Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, to Rabbi Meir Baalanes. If those words brings the chill, the goosebumps to your skin, wakes up your heart in a way that you desire to see the Galilee Sea, that you want to go to the Holy Land of Israel, that you desire to see the Mountain of Olives, that you want to see the precious holy stones of the holy mountains that are surrounding the holy city of Jerusalem. In all those moments you are experiencing your true inner connection to who your soul really is. The world is reflecting your true identity. The world is showing to, who, to you who you really are. The world is a mirror that is putting the Creator in the center. And how come if the Creator is in the center that we're experiencing our lives as individuals, how can it be that we're not all day long, 24-7, busy with thinking about the Creator, but most of the hours we do feel and sense things through our own senses? 
and we experience life as individuals, when you're hungry, you don't think that Hashem is hungry. When you are bored or amused, you don't think that Hashem now was bored or amused. You're thinking about yourself. When someone is calling you in your name, you feel and you think that you are the reality of this world. All the things are surrounding you. But we learned in the Holy Torah that there is nothing except of Hashem. And that Hashem he is the center and the core of creation. And that Hashem he is the in and out of all the worlds and He is the the live spirit of everything. So how come we feel and experience different feelings and we feel that we have a certain existence and that we are who we are and that we mean something and that we need certain things and that we feel those things. How come? Because we are as well the reflection of His greatness, of the Creator Himself. We are the outfit of the Creator. We are the cloaks of honor of the Almighty. And we need to represent Him in that way. To believe in yourself, it's to believe in Hashem. To believe in Hashem, it's to believe in yourself. When you find your true identity, you know exactly who you are in the units of the great army of heaven. You know exactly which position you hold. You know exactly what you need to do with your life. You understand the mission and the purpose of your existence and your being. When you find your true self, you recognize the supervision of the Almighty in your life. And you know exactly what's the next step, what you need to do and how you need to do it and in which way and what are the right directions that you need to aim your prayers to and with whom you need to speak with and who you need to reject from your path. And you recognize those things from within because you are close to your high level of your self-awareness and in that place you become to be the one that you are completely and your fears cannot control you and your pressure cannot overpower you and you find the true nature of your soul and all the souls are connected and bonded together in the sea of souls that is the Creator Himself in infinity in the light of Ein Sof Baruch Hu, the infinity itself, the light of unity, the endless one, the source of good and goodness and beauty and kindness. And you are who you are and we're all one. Am Israel is one nation, it's one unit. Am Israel, the nation of Israel, the Bible and the Creator, Kud Shabirich Hu, is one unit. We just look to each other that we are divided but actually we're different letters that together we compose the same book. One letter with another letter becomes one word and that word with another word becomes a verse and that verse becomes to be a chapter and that chapter becomes to be a portion and that portion adds to another portion and it's one book out of five and those five book those five books becomes the Bible and they are attached to another 24 books and another 24 books of the prophets that are revealing to us are holding more words and verses and volumes of, of holy content that builds out of spirits and every spirit and every soul is a letter and it's a person with an identity, with a character, it's you. You're one of the letters in one of the verses and without you the book will be disqualified. And there are verses from the written Torah and there are verses and lines that have been said by the sages from the oral Torah. And you might be a spiritual one from the oral side and you can be a physical one that reflects physicality in a certain aspect of your being in the written Torah. And it's very, very deep and you should believe it to experience it. Without you believing it, you cannot experience it. All the time we're experiencing difficulties, all the time we're experiencing weaknesses and shakes in our path and up and downs and, and, um, and stones that are blocking our path and we are going through many, many valleys and waves in our path. But we should remember, we are only experiencing our life on the timeline as a certain point 
in eternity. The truth is that the large picture, the complete picture, is much greater than we can see. You are catching one glimpse of a moment, one moment in time. But in reality, your being is part of infinity itself. Like that in science, you can go with a microscope and to go deeper and deeper into every cell of creation and to see the atoms and it never ends. The fact that the eye of science were not able to grab something smaller than the smallest um, particle in creation that they found until today, it doesn't mean that really there the, the nature of creation ends. The fact that science with their telescopes they couldn't grab more than the deep space that they caught with their equipment. Doesn't mean that the world finishes and ends over there. That's only the ability of the eye of people in our generation. But there is no end to creation. I hope that soon I will, in one of the days, I will read for you a description from heaven in one of the Midrashim that I read. I'll tell you in few words what it, it says. It says over there, that the tree of life that the Creator created in the Garden of Eden is a huge tree and I don't remember all the details and this is why I'm saying that I'm going to read it for you in a few days Bezat Hashem in one of the classes I'll give on Facebook and over there it's written that there are if I'm not wrong three um, three branches or three trees or something like that and between each and every one of them there are 613 worlds and every one of those worlds I'm unfortunately I cannot remember the real truth is that in the last few weeks I went through a lot of pressure and it it's it like really affect me I I'm I went through a lot a lot a lot and I'm I cannot remember all the details of what that I read um, in that Midrash a few days ago and this is why I'm gonna read it to you again in a few days but um, it's written over there that between each and every one of those three uh, branches there are 613 worlds and each and every one of those worlds one of those 613 is similar to our world so that tree of life that was standing in the middle of the Garden of Eden is so huge, so gigantic, that between each and every one of its branches there are 613 universes that are complete and gigantic with sun systems and, and, and all the things that you, you... like the huge creation that that you think that you know, that you heard about. So 613 of those are standing between each and every one of those branches. So the size of heaven, of the Garden of Eden, of the Tree of Life, of this creation is impossible for people like us to understand and to, and to, and to grasp. And we just need to throw our small mind and to follow the Creator with a blind and innocent heart and to walk with Him in the path of life and to count on His endless love and on His unconditional love and on His great mercy that He will heal us all and bring us all to the day of redemption, to the time of salvation and to see the resurrection of the dead all of our loved ones coming back to life, all the souls from all the generations coming back to life and marching in unity with great joy and happiness and satisfaction on their faces and in their hearts with all their loved ones to the house of Hashem, the house that will be called the house of prayer to all nations and everyone will know Him and will call Him in His name in that day and the King Mashiach Tzidkenu will be the one to crown the real king, Hashem Barach, the creator, source of blessing and love. And he will rule the world with his heavenly kingship for good. Amen. Ken Yehi Ratzon. The world is not existing.
because Olam Milchon Elem, the world is just blocking the light of truth. The world called Alma de Shikra, world of light, is just a fake. We're just inside of an illusion. It's just a fake. We're just inside of an illusion. We're just inside of an illusion.